Hey y'all, it's Rashio Christie South, and today we're going to talk about an article published by The Independent titled, Academics Say Rape Culture Stems From the Bible. So the article start. let's just get right into it. So the article stops talking, starts by talking about a judge that is accused of victim blaming. I don't know all the specifics of the case. If the judge was victim blaming, then definitely shame on that judge. If not, well, I guess that's no shame. But I'm not here to talk about the case since I don't know much about it. Instead, what I'm going to do is to talk about the biblical aspects. And so it starts off and it says, Biblical attitudes to rape. As deeply influential central document, the Bible has a lot to say when it comes to attitudes towards around sex, shame, and gender identity. Rape is endemic in the Bible both literally and metaphorically. And more often than not, functions as a conduit for male competition and a tool to upload patriarchy. All right, so let's get a few things out right now. Um, one, rape is, happens a lot in the Bible. There's a lot of things that happen in the Bible that God does not approve of. And rape is definitely among them. And so what we're going to see later in this article, we're going to go and look at these passages and see what God has to say about the rape that had occurred. As far as to these, some a lot of these links, these aren't biblical passages. Instead, they are links to books by academics. I don't know if they're actually theologists or if they're just gender studies people. And see what their view is on the Bible. And as far as whether or not it has to do with rape culture. So, let's go into it. So, we're going to first start off with the story of David's rap of Bathsheba. So with David and Bathsheba, um, King David had saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. He sent his messengers to, to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Now, that doesn't necessarily say it was rape, but it is possible. He could have forced himself on her he, or he could have used his king powers. You know, he's a very powerful person to co coerce her that way. So it doesn't really go into much detail. But if it was rape, that was wrong. But let's see what God has to say about this later on, which we'll get to in a second. But Bathsheba says to David that she's pregnant. And so what David does is he goes and she's married, so he kills her husband. Now, he doesn't kill her, him directly, but what he does do is he sends him off into battle, and then he has all the other forces retreat except for him, so he dies in battle. Which is terrible, but, and at the very end of this chapter it says, But such a thing David has done has displeased the Lord. Let's just look about what, how he had actually displeased God. So what God did was he sent Nathan to David, and then Nathan sort of gave him this test. He says, Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had brought it to, who had come to him. And David responded to Nathan saying, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He may must pay for the lamb four times because he had done such a thing and had no pity. And Nathan responded, congratulations, you played yourself. And so basically this goes on to God punishing David for what he has done. And it just shows that God is not approving of what David is, be is doing at this time. So, back to the article. It's saying it's echoed in his son. He had David's son, Amnon. He also, um, he definitely raped his half-sister, Tamar. And we're going to talk about that. So, with Amnon... You know, he fell in love with his sister, and what he did was he lured her into his room, and he said, uh, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered, No, my brother, do not force me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do anything so vile. What she's referring to is incest is being is uh, banned in Israel at this time, so th she was not going to do it for that reason, as well as probably her own reason of just being icky. 
But, you know, of course it says, then he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he forced her to lay with her. And it does say that Amnon was uh, deeply upset about what he had done, but instead of really taking responsibility for his actions, he continued, he just said, get lost. And he just sort of threw his uh, half-sister out after raping her, which is horrible. And then her. Tamar's other brother, Absalom, avenges this by killing Abnon. And well, while God doesn't, well, really, this whole passage doesn't really even say what God had done, uh, how what God was approving or disproving. I mean, it's pretty sure that we can be pretty sure that God was disproving of what was going on here for our multiple reasons. But even in this thing, even though it doesn't talk about, what, and it also, it's Absalom getting his vengeance for his sister being uh, raped. So I don't think this, this doesn't paint the rapist in any sort of positive light. In fact, it really shows Abnon to be a horrible person. Well, I guess Absalom is a hero, right? Well, not quite. Because then it goes on talking about, and his son Absalom's rape of David's ten concubines. Yeah, the, the um, Old Testament was not, the, the Israelites and the people around them really weren't the best of people all the time. In fact, there was a lot of horrible things that went on. And so what happened here was Absalom, he sort of usurps the throne for um, uh, King David. And then he basically tells to one of the, tells to one of the people, it says, uh, give us console. And so what they did was they pitched the fort for Absalom upon the roof. He went to his father's concubines inside of all Israel, which is pretty much suggesting that he did rape them. Now again, this doesn't talk about the uh, Lord really saying anything in this passage, but I mean, it's beyond obvious that this is awful. And what happens later? Well, Absalom, he ends up fighting. There's a war breaking out and he dies in battle. So he's not punished directly for this, for uh, the rape in particular, but he does get justice. And it doesn't seem, if you read this passage, it does not paint uh, Absalom in a positive light here at all. And then finally it says, as in Judges 21, through soon, the Benjamites are saved from mass extinction through mass rape of women and Jezef, Jab, Jabesh, Jabesh Jalid and Shiloh. I'm sorry, I know I butchered that. I know I butchered that bad. And so, all right, whoa, whoa, whoa. It saves from mass extinction. So, yeah, it does sort of sound like, yeah, they saved them from mass extinction. That really does sound like, you know, they're trying to justify rape that uh, was occurring. Yeah, the rape, there was absolutely rape. They got a mass rape of these people so they could reproduce the Benjamites so they didn't go, so they didn't lose the tribe. Well, not quite, though. But the thing is, this isn't quite true because this is just a title. And what happens is, a few of these versions of the Bible, in this case the New Revised Standard Version, it take it took um these all the titles are artistic liberties. These aren't these aren't verses in the Bible. These are just things to uh, summarize what was happening. As we can see here, when we look at the New International Version, it says "Wives for the Benjamites." The King James Version doesn't have anything at all, no title at all, and um, whatever this one. Whatever this version, it doesn't give, it says the people bewail the desolation of Israel. So what's happening here is it doesn't seem like, so this save from mass extinction doesn't seem, so it's just, uh, so save from mass extinction isn't biblical, it's just an artistic liberty. But yeah, I do think save from mass extinction is in poor taste. All right, let's leave, uh, read forward. A common thread in the biblical text is women are responsible for maintaining their sexual purity. This is not in the interest of their own well-being, but to ensure male proper that as male property, women remain undamaged. This seems to be a no-win situation. 
all right, this isn't uh, this isn't a biblical passage. 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 These are other books that the author doesn't really go into, and that I'm not going into uh, either. If there is something there, I don't know. I might go into it later. Probably not. But what it does is over here it talks about the consequences for a deny, and it says who transgress social boundaries by going out to meet women of the land, and says she is raped, and that does happen. And and this one got um it doesn't again the Bible is a lot of the time the historical document doesn't um, God doesn't give his opinion on each and everything that happens in the Bible and this is one of those cases so in this way yes deny is raped but then what happens later on well denies brothers avenge their sister so in response to them being to their sister being raped the brothers go out and they kill the people responsible and people not responsible whether or not they should kill the people not responsible that's you know. One thing, like I said, God isn't giving his, that's debatable about what's, about their response, whether that, and that's appropriate, but that's not really, um, the Bible's not giving any sort of um, condemning or condoning either way. All right, so blame for one's beauty. In the case of a very beautiful woman, Susanna, Susanna is the subject of an attempted rape by two elders who spy on her while she's bathing before conspiring to coerce her into sex. So let's look at this passage. Um, this passage. Oh, and let's, uh, the Lord does uh, speak on this time. This time he says, um, wickedness came forth from Babylon from elders who were judges who were supposed to govern the people. These men were frequently at Joachim's house and all who had a case tried to tried them to be there. And so it was when the people were at noon, Susanna was she went to her um she go to her husband's and what happened was these men they started being lustful. They lust after her and what they did was they plotted and conspired. They did was they said they were going to make up a story that there was a man with her. And so, but then they tried to trap her into it. And Susanna responded, I am trapped for if I do this, it'll mean death for me. If I do not, I cannot escape your hands. I choose not to do it. I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. And so this is her doing things to please God. Um, and what happens then is, all right, of course, the elders, they go and testify against Susanna. And then the Lord had heard their cry, and then God had sort of stirred up the spirit in Daniel, who had sort of stopped it. And not only that, he just, not only that he did he stop it, he condemned the elders. He condemned them to death, in fact. They were both, uh, it says in the... Very well, as this lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you two and destroy you both. Then the whole assembly uh, raised and gathered a shout and blessed God, who had saved the lives of them in hope. And they took action against the uh, two elders, because they, from their own mouths David had convicted them of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to their neighbor, uh, Susanna. Acting in according with the law of Moses, they put them to death, and the innocent of the blood was spared. So, these men tried to rape Susanna, and, well, they got murdered. I mean, not murdered. They got executed. So, I definitely don't see this as as far as victim blaming, but let's talk about what the article is saying about this. When This is when, um... This is what Daniel... Rescue says... Beauty has beguiled you, and your lust has perverted your heart. So she's upset about this statement because she says, Here, as so often in contemporary society, rape and soul are linked to sexual attractiveness of the woman rather than a violent crime of power and control. Well, I mean, here, I don't think that they really are saying, Oh, well, it was the woman's fault. I mean, this is what she's saying to them. She doesn't. Daniel doesn't say anything to Savannah saying, Well, if you weren't so attractive, these men weren't. If you didn't do this, these men wouldn't have tried to rape you. They don't say anything like that. Now, as far as whether rape and sexual assault are linked to attractiveness rather than a violent crime of control and power, I mean, that's debated. That's a psychology area. That, I mean, Daniel's not a 
psychology or sociology PhD, so he's not really giving a... a it's not like he's giving a dissertation on the nature of it, I mean, but as far as how much of this has to do with attractive as a woman rather than power of control, that's debated among them, so, I mean, I'm sure it was probably a mixture of both. You know, they saw a woman, they were really interested, but they also, you know, they wanted to control her and dominate her for their own perverse thing. And it just, and even uh, still it says, your lust has perverted your heart. So even though if they said it was mostly based on their, on Susanna's attractiveness, they also, they mostly blamed the lust that had perverted their heart and sort of brought them to do such a thing. And so going back to the, Thing says that even in art, Susanna is implicitly blamed for being target as critic, as uh, that Susanna, like Bathsheba, are often dependent, depicted looking at themselves in the mirror while bathing. And well, and the thing with this is, well, this isn't Israelite art. This is they're talking about art that's happening thousands of years after the events of the Bible. So I don't see how this is the Bible uh, perpetuating this idea of um, vanity. All right, so Klitschner goes on to suggest that women do not exhibit this inhibited behavior by abstaining from alcohol are better, able to fight off men with evil intentions. What is key is that moder moderating women's behavior does nothing to do to address the issue of rape and dismantle rape culture. It shifts the blame onto women. I mean, this is sort of going on from the Bible, and it's and I'm just going to you know end it off with this. Rape is a horrible crime, and women are not to be blamed for being raped. You know, no matter if they were drinking, no matter what they were wearing, or anything like that. I'm definitely not trying to say that. But I don't think at the same time that the Bible is trying to any either. So anyways, that was my vi the end of that's the end of this video. Tell me what you think. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is uh, Ratio Christie South. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And you... What? And y'all have a good day. Alright.